talk about this bullshit. Every time we go through this, y'all. Fuck you, man. If you're not going to be there for me, then what the hell is you here for? See, this is what I go through on a daily, man. Trying to convince everybody this ain't no hobby that I just picked up last year. See, this is exactly why I do music, because you be on that bullshit. Mean I'll spend no time they don't understand you. that she I'm not out here ignoring them. My girl calling me like, when we going to spend time? My family talk about when you going to come visit us? Like, I'm out here trying to make moves to better us all. I've been doing this for so long. Like, it's a second nature. Why wouldn't they expect this from me? From middle school, back when I was freestyling in the lunchroom tables, banging over beats, walking to friends' houses for ciphers. Like, this is the stuff I grew up on outside of having to be confounded in my family because I had, came from a group of pastors. Granddad was a pastor, Pop was a pastor, and I'm a rapper. Like, it looked crazy. Why can't anybody accept this for me? Like, this is what I really do. Instead, I got to sit here and try to argue with them instead of focus on my craft. I just need to get away. I need to hit the booth. What's going on? It's the boy Cook the Writer, straight out of South Jersey, you know, Burlington, Trenton area, all down to Glassboro, you know, hip hop artist. Well, the start of me rapping was back in the day, you know, I was kind of kind of sheltered due to the fact that, uh, you know, my family was a very religious family. So, honestly, I got my first mixtape, and it was a GLN mixtape, and just hearing the energy them guys had and how they came from pretty much a, a, a hood where it was just them and got themselves on through their, their energy, their movement. They're forced to take over clubs, take over radio stations, and pretty much shut the industry down. You know, I came up in that phase, that was around my seventh, eighth grade year in school. And honestly, I, that, that bug bit me and I wouldn't let go since. I would follow Lloyd Banks the most because I was always on to the punch lines and the, the witty comments he would make. So I would kind of, you know, memorize verses he would did and try to recite them or like, you know, play off of them and say them as if it was myself. Influences come from many of people, you know, I really like storytellers and lyrical artists, you know. Of course, the traditional Biggie, you know, I know people say Biggie and never listen to Biggie. However, I listen to Biggie. For four sessions nowadays, I listen to Biggie. I don't just, I know who uses his lines nowadays and I give Biggie credit for them. I don't think these rappers are witty because they said, you know, that Brooklyn bullshit, we on it. I know where it came from. I know people that, I, I listen to him, so he's one of them. You know, Joe Buttons, maybe it's a Jersey thing, or maybe it's just, I actually like good music, but he's another one of them. I mean, anybody in Slaughterhouse I kind of listen to. Fabulous. Cassidy is, is a person who, you know, because I was from South Jersey, we were all hyped over Cassidy. I mean, the battle with Freeway was was just like, it felt like we were all there. <laughs> That's how hyped we would get listening to it, playing it back like it was a record. So I, I think, you know, those were probably my main influences. First bars I wrote, I, um, it was in seventh grade, and we, we was in, um, at the lunch table. I remember exactly. We was uh, just, you know, looking at different things around us and um, freestyling. I, I looked down at this, this bottle of Snapple and I was like, um, my balls are the best when I'm at my worst. My raps are like Snapple, made from the best stuff on earth. And we was like, just being silly. And everybody looked at me like, where the hell did that come from? And then they looked at my bottles like, oh, snap, you nice. Well, he was like a seventh grade, so <laughs> we thought that was nice back then. Pursuit of Rap honestly came from a lot of just not not having any outlets, you know. Uh, I would live, I would go to school in Lumberton and live in Trenton, which was an hour and a half away from my school. So I would have to wake up dumb early every day to head to school. And then I would have to leave right after school to get home. So I never really, you know, could be social. I couldn't join any, any clubs, no basketball programs in my middle school days. All I had was music. And at the time, you know, 
uh, my brother five years older than me, that was the only one that was around. However, he was in high school, so he was driving, going to get joints and just leaving me at the crib. I ain't had nobody to talk to. So it was either got to a point where I either went crazy and talked to myself or I grabbed these beats and just started speaking to them. That that honestly began to, to soothe me in a lot of ways and, and would really, you know, set it off from not only myself but made my family realize I was serious with after um due to circumstances we kept moving around and we lost our house a couple times and you know this, this situation is trying to lean on and depend on family and you know things fell through you know it's water under the bridge now but at the time I was really hurt by it and um I played Jay-Z's song cry track and then I took the instrumental and and from the day one you know even even talking about how you know we was put out on Christmas day like you know I put everything we went through in that track and just and just left it there and to this day, you know, that, that honestly, that has to be my personal favorite verse I'm telling you, because it, it honestly captured where I was at in my life and everything I was going through, and it soothed me. It stopped me from having to feel alone in this world. It stopped me from having to feel like, you know, I needed to depend on people because I had, I had these tracks, I had these beats that I could vent over. Stay here too. Got this HD vision, let them pay per view. See the ways we live and they can't make it through. Days I can't push through, that's when I need you. Get my lean on, help me sleep at night, then get my dream on. Wake me up so I can go get my achieve on. All me, be all I can be on. Move kids, you know me, get that motif on. I'm kidding, no, I won't do that. Help me to sling this lyrical crack, that's a lyrical fact. Boomerang slang when it come back, y'all be able to catch the facts. If not, check the stats. Going in, y'all, no cause. Air the beat out, stepped out, no draws. Do this all day, press play, no pause. Will the shows go on? What makes me different as an artist and what makes my music and style of music different is it's my story from my point of view. People people don't realize that, you know, there are always a thousand different points. Like even even in a, in a type of uh, activity or one event, you know, three people are gonna give you three different stories. I'm just bringing mine to the table for everyone to, to you know, dissect and to analyze and be like, okay, maybe I do agree with him on this or I don't agree with him on this. I feel like my style is, is me, you know, I'm not trying to be anybody else. I'm not pretending to walk in somebody else's lane. I just write based on my emotions. And if somebody else just so happy to go do that, you know, maybe their opinion is different from mine, but at least we can all relate. Music is, 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 is something that it, it, it will be around forever because people always have feelings. People forget to focus on, you know, the going through feelings. We'd rather make the, you know, just go plain stupid and forget about what you're going through music versus talking about, you know, real problems that people have, people losing their jobs, people, you know, losing family members or, or even some celebratory things in their life, like, you know, new life, you know, people don't capture those feelings anymore and, and that's that's why I, I like to make that time and soul music that, that speaks to you no matter what you're going through. Um, Squad is kept, I'm working on a couple projects right now, um, pretty much trying to focus on um, just making honestly timeless music, that's what the main focus is right now, you know, as far as the title of any of that, you know, it might just be called Timeless Music for all of you to love and enjoy. You know, I also had a side project, Elevator Music, we put it together. But you know, everything's in, in due time and it feel like, you know, the best is yet to come. So we're just making music and as, as the, you know, catalog builds, present it to the world however best we can. Take off time is a mindset. It's, it's, it's exactly how my music is. It's a mindset that takes you from where you're at and goes to a higher level. When you're on a plane and you take off, that means you're no longer preparing to stay on the ground. You're ready to go to new heights. So when you hear take off time on any record from any artist, whether you know 
they're trying to add a bit, if you didn't take off time in the beginning, I probably wrote it. Because that's what I'm about, taking people to new heights with this music. So, once again, it's your boy Cook the Writer. You know, this is my EPK. And stay tuned for a lot of timeless classic music. Take off time.